Hola y sean bienvenidos todos a este simposio satélite de Brain Lab, donde contaremos con el profesor doctor Filippo Alonji, quien es el profesor asociado y radioncólogo e investigador clínico en Verona. Ha publicado más de 260 artículos científicos, así como también más de 100 abstractos y capítulos en libros. Su área de experticios es la radiocirugía estereotáctica extracraneal, hipofraccionamiento, radioterapia guiada por imágenes, imágenes moleculares en radioncología, cáncer de próstata y oligometástasis. Actualmente labora en Sacro Cuore, Don Calabria Cancer, Cares, Cancer Care Center en Verona, fungiendo como director del Departamento de Técnicas Avanzadas de Radioncología. Y hoy nos estará hablando sobre el tema de tratamiento automatizado con radiocirugía espinal y los beneficios de las herramientas modernas del software. Con ustedes, profesor Dr. Filippo. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanks uh, to Brain Lab for the uh, possibility to share our experience and our view regarding uh, uh, automated spine SRS treatment and the benefit of modern software tools. This is my agenda. Uh, I will discuss about the emerging role of SRS and SBRT in the setting of spinal metastasis. I will uh, describe the target definition uh, uh, approach of SRS and SBRT for spinal lesions. And I will discuss the benefit of modern software tools for spine SRS. And uh, at the end, uh, I will uh, share with you our clinical experience utilizing element spine SRS in uh, uh, this uh, setting of spinal metastasis. So regarding the emerging role of uh, SRS and SBRT, I'd like to start with this concept uh, regarding the incidence of uh, the phenomenon of uh, spinal metastasis. We can say that approximately one third of cancer patients can develop uh, uh, spinal metastasis and uh, uh, 7% of the metastasis are properly involving the vertebral column. Back pain is the most common uh, initial symptom and we know uh, that uh, if these uh, sites are untreated, spinal metastasis can cause vertebral body fracture, uh, radiculopathy and debilitating complication uh, uh, up to uh, epidural spinal compression. We know that uh, the role of uh, historical uh, uh, convention, uh, uh, conventional radiotherapy is uh, well clear. The most commonly used regime is 30 gray in 10 fraction. We know also that the single dose treatment are usually preferred in patients with limited uh, uh, life expectancies or poor performance status or in case of waiting list uh, uh, in, uh, in the rad radiation therapy centers. In this table, you can see uh, the experience regarding conventional radiotherapy. We know from this data that there are no clear differences in terms of approach. The regime of a single dose uh, seems to be not inferior compared to uh, the conventional fractionation in five or uh, 10 sessions. What we can see about the limits of conventional radiotherapy, it is well known that uh, complete response rate uh, seems to be really low. We are approximately between 0 and 20%, partial response approximately 60%, and uh, the cumulative local control of these cases is less than uh, 50%. What about uh, radiation therapy? Modern radiation therapy is in the midst of a lot of changes in terms of technology, in terms of expertise. We know that uh, irrespectively of the machine that you have now, we are able to focus very high doses to small volumes. So starting from uh, uh, this uh, uh, assumption, we know that also from uh, radiobiological point of view, uh, we have uh, new uh, knowledge because uh, we know that uh, if we prescribe very high dose per fraction, we can include, we can take into account new uh, phenomenon, including uh, endothelium damage of the vessels, also ischemic and immunological uh, components uh, of cell killing, non accounting for alpha beta. Uh, so uh, starting from uh, this background, 
we can uh, say that a lot of new indication regarding ablative doses are emerging. And in the last 10 years, as you know, uh, the uh, world of radiation oncology was changed by the possibility to treat uh, oligometastatic and oligoprogressive patients with uh, uh, curative doses. And uh, uh, specifically in uh, 2020, we can say that there is not an exhaustive terminology to define oligometastasis. We could have uh, different declination. We could have a synchronous oligometastasis, metachronous oligometastasis, oligorecurrent, oligoprogression. In all of these situations, ablative doses can be uh, delivered safely with the intent not only of the palliation, but also to add something to control the disease. And uh, uh, obviously, the last end point is to increase survival. Uh, these, uh, uh, these data are very important because, as you know, recently uh, Palma and colleague published uh, uh, the paper of Sable Comet. Sable Comet is, was an, uh, an important phase two trial in which was shown that Sable, uh, compared to uh, standard of care, compared to control, could be able to increase survival if we treat up to five lesions in terms of uh, oligometastatic uh, disease. And uh, uh, this paper, this data, uh, were confirming this second uh, uh, printed paper in which uh, the advantage in terms of survival was concrete uh, with a longer uh, follow-up. So we can say that now, compared to control arm that could be represented by standard systemic treatment, the addition of uh, selective uh, radiation therapy to selective sites could be a way to uh, change the disease and to change the uh, behavior of the disease in most of the cases impacting on survival. What we can say about uh, uh, the emerging role of uh, specifically of SRS and SBRT in spinal metastasis? For sure, we can say that spine SBRT has been quickly adopted in uh, radiation therapy uh, community. Uh, we have available retrospective and prospective evidence uh, uh, growing in uh, this setting. And uh, uh, for sure, we can say that the indication uh, in the setting is uh, uh, increasing uh, a lot, not only for palliation, but I, uh, as I said, also to uh, uh, try to improve the control of, uh, of disease. Regarding data, for sure, uh, stereotactic body radiation therapy in the novo spinal metastasis is able to increase local control. Uh, we have data of local control of 90% at one year, complete pain control in more, uh, more than 50%. Uh, and the toxicity profile seems to be really low because vertebral compression fracture is less than 10% uh, and myelopathy is uh, approximately close to zero. Uh, this paper is an important paper because uh, uh, was shown in a green journal recently with this randomized phase two trial that uh, SBRT seems to be not uh, inferior when compared to three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy uh, to treat spinal lesion. And this is, it was the first step uh, to evaluate uh, the role of spinal SBRT as a potential application in the novo metastasis. Here you can see a table uh, with the synthesis of uh, most of the, uh, uh, some of the most important experiences regarding uh, the prospective study in uh, this setting. And uh, we can say for sure that uh, uh, local control rate range between 84 and 96 percent, very high level. And uh, this is uh, another important uh, review published uh, on JAMA Oncology in 2020, in which uh, was uh, uh, defined the role of uh, stereotactic ablative uh, radiotherapy for the management of spinal metastasis, because uh, uh, it could be able to obtain very high local control rate at one year, between 80 and 90 percent in the novo setting, but also in 80 percent in post-operative uh, setting and greater than 65% in the ray radiation setting. And it is very important because, as you know, uh, the uh, scenario of the potential indication of SBRT uh, is larger than expected uh, based on uh, this data. 
Here you can see the NCC guidelines. Uh, this is one of the last version. You can see that uh, the uh, possibility to use SBRT uh, for uh, treatment uh, in the novo metastasis, but also retreatment is included. So uh, something is changing also in clinical practice because uh, the emerging data are in favor of this application and guidelines are including uh, even more this kind of possibility. Here you can see uh, the data of re uh, retrospective uh, and some prospective uh, uh, trials and study regarding spine SBRT in ray radiation. That is another very intriguing application. And as you can see here, local control rate seems to be uh, very high, in some cases more than 90%. Saber, in fact, in ray radiation is intriguing because it may be able to uh, reduce the uh, dose to uh, the maximum small uh, volume dose to the spinal cord and is able to allow the delivery of a comparatively higher dose to much of the progressing tumor, reducing the risk of myelopathy. This is another very uh, interesting paper. Uh, this is a paper of, uh, from dosimetric point of view published by Furuja and uh, colleague this year. Uh, this is a, a feasibility uh, evaluation of large tumors in multiple vertebra undergoing ray radiation. And there was a dosimetric challenge between uh, different techniques. Obviously, for spine, uh, SBRT is crucial to concentrate the prescribed dose on the target and simultaneously maintain spinal cord irradiation at acceptable level in terms of constraints. And in their analysis, you can see uh, that uh, IMRT and volumetric techniques are viable option for multiple large vertebral SBRT, while uh, cyber knife uh, plans could not achieve the constraints. And this uh, discrepancy may be related to the treatment duration that can be affected, that can influence, obviously, uh, some aspects, including the dosimetric application of the treatment. This slide regards uh, post-operative SBRT. This is another very interesting approach because uh, from the data that we have, local failure rates uh, uh, are 79.3, 96 at one and four years after post-operative uh, external beam radiation therapy. So starting from this data, the role of SBRT may be intriguing. And uh, in some paper, including, uh, including that one, uh, the Red Journal in 2016, uh, we, uh, the authors reported a crude local control of 88.6, very high level, considering uh, this uh, uh, multidisciplinary approach, including SAD. Here you can see, uh, this is a, a journal Neurospine 2017, a consensus uh, uh, and predominant practice uh, regarding the definition of the volumes of the organ at risk for post-operative spine SBRT. So it's important to focus on the fact that now we have some guidelines, we have some articles, and we could have some data that can allow us to face at first this kind of situation. Here you can see suggestions regarding fractionation schedules and spinal constraints in a post-operative SBRT spinal application. And you, here you can see some data uh, in detail. We have retrospective and some prospective data regarding uh, uh, local control rates that are variable between 65 and approximately 91%. So also here, intriguing data regarding the role of SBRT also in post-operative setting. This slide only to say that before to select, uh, select the patient, we can consider uh, some classification, including spinal instability uh, score and norms uh, in order to approach uh, the right situation in a personalized way. The second point that I show you briefly with you is the target definition. That is another important uh, uh, challenging situation for radiation oncologists if they are not used to uh, treat this patient with SBRT. This paper, I think that is a milestone because it was published in 2012 by uh, Cox and colleague. 
it is a real uh, uh, consensus guideline regarding the target volume definition uh, in spinal stereotactic radiosurgery. I recommend to read it because it is really clear and you can see that uh, uh, considering the site of involvement of the vertebra, uh, uh, this vertebra could be divided in sub-segment and there is a clear uh, recommendation of how you have to include or to exclude some part of the vertebra. However, uh, even if we have this kind of guideline, uh, this paper is clear, published by uh, my, my friends uh, Dino De Bari and colleague in uh, Green Journal 2017. It is an important uh, paper because uh, 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 it uh, was shown, uh, Astro Falcon program, you know, is a, a program uh, in which a lot of colleagues are involved uh, to contour some uh, uh, sites, including vertebra in this case. In this case. And uh, there was a high variability in target definition for spinal SRS. So even if we have uh, uh, learning uh, uh, guidelines available, the variability remain high. And uh, uh, obviously, it could be a limit regarding the precision of, uh, of the treatment. It is important to have also in the target definition the availability of different kinds of images, uh, for sure MRI, but if you have uh, uh, PET uh, CT images are important, thanks to the fusion of these images, you can improve the quality of the target definition for sure. Uh, as you know, there are other guidelines. Uh, the, it was published by Danny and a colleague in Green Journal uh, last year. Uh, it is an uh, international consensus recommendation of target definition, not only for spinal uh, uh, disease, but also for uh, uh, the pelvis, the first part of sacrum. As you can see here, you can find some recommendation of how to approach also uh, some uh, extremities and some uh, part of the uh, uh, column that were not included in the uh, previous one. And here you can see the data of Katsulakis regarding uh, uh, obviously the impact in terms of dose prescription uh, for S S SRS and SBRT. And as you can see, we have a large variability in terms of uh, number of sessions, but also in terms of uh, uh, fractions. Uh, resuming, we can say that obviously single fraction is able to achieve the highest local control uh, with a range between 80 and 95 percent, but we have uh, um, robust data uh, that are not in favor regarding the safety because we could have also a uh, higher uh, fracture rate between 36 and 39 percent, while in multi-fraction approach we could have uh, a little bit less uh, in terms of uh, uh, local control, but uh, we can reduce up to 8 to 50 percent, uh, uh, 15% percent the rate of uh, uh, compression fracture. Another important thing is to maintain constraints, obviously for the safety of the treatment, the Quantec uh, uh, DMAX limit uh, recommended is 13 grain single fraction or 20 in three fraction. Here you can see how to define spinal cord and to maintain a, a distance between the vertebral body and a spinal cord in order to have the reduction of the dose uh, thanks to the delivery of SBRT. Uh, even if uh, in this other paper by Katsulakis and colleague in Red Journal in 2007, you can see that it's possible to maintain a DMAX limit uh, of uh, 14 grays that uh, it is, seems to be related to less than 1% rate of myelopathy. So it seems to be safe to uh, uh, maintain uh, uh, within this uh, dose, maximum dose. Here uh, you can see the evolving role of stereotactic body therapy in the management of metastasis. You can see here uh, the dose and the constraints that are usually applied in detail. This paper is obviously uh, available in clinical uh, in 2020, neurosurgical, uh, published by uh, Morris and colleagues. And it is important also to follow this patient, uh, how to approach uh, the follow-up. Uh, for sure, conventional T1 and T2 uh, magnetic resonant imaging is uh, recommended with one to two uh, millimeters of uh, slight thickness, performed every two, three months uh, after save uh, for the first uh, year or the first uh, 18 months, and every three, six months thereafter. 
The uh, following point that I will uh, uh, share with you is the benefit uh, of uh, the use of modern software tools for spinal SRS. As Bogdan said, uh, we had the pleasure to be the first center in Europe, for sure the first uh, in Italy to test uh, uh, in a particular uh, element spine, SRS. We started in 2018. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, Element Spine is a solution capable uh, to obtain an optimal multi images alignment, uh, especially between uh, uh, CT and MRI, or PET and or MRI and simulation CT. Uh, this, is, this system is uh, uh, easy, and uh, uh, you can obtain easily an auto segmentation, uh, delineating the, the targets. Uh, um, and the sector uh, that are uh, crucial for your plan. And obviously, SBRT planning was designed to obtain incredibly sharp dose gradient that I will show you in detail in some uh, cases that are following. Here you can see the first phase, that is the, the formable registration between CT and MRI. Uh, we are able to correct postural setup errors during the positioning of the various exam focused on the column. Here you can see the auto contouring of the system that is uh, uh, able to generate from GTV on MRI and CT images, the CTV. Here you can see, in fact, an, an example of auto contouring of CTV with bone uh, substructure involved, starting from the delineated uh, GTV. Uh, I uh, described before uh, the Cox paper uh, regarding the uh, consensus of how to define uh, this uh, volume. Uh, Brain Lab Element uh, Spine is able to use these guidelines and to auto generate in a few seconds what you need for the definition of your volumes. Here you can see the planning of optimization in detail. The system is really uh, easy to use because you have the constraints and uh, you can see uh, clearly uh, with the colors red or green if you have uh, the uh, respect of your constraints. Here you can see the evaluation of uh, the plan and you can see the dose distribution in this case. And this is the approval. As you can see, uh, most of the spinal uh, canal is out and the spinal cord for sure is outside the prescription doses. That is what uh, we need to achieve. I'd like also to uh, uh, share with you this experience. Uh, it was presented at the ESTRO by some colleagues of, uh, from Canada. And it was very important because uh, they did what uh, we did in our department. They uh, considered the best approach uh, uh, of their department before to have uh, uh, this uh, system. So RapidArc uh, was their uh, best practice before. And after the introduction of uh, Novalis uh, Element Spine SRS, they tried to compare the two approaches. And as you can see here, uh, they obtain a significant reduction of the volume of the spinal cord receiving 10 gray uh, uh, with the use of a spine SRS element with a significant differences, uh, difference between a, a spinal uh, SRS element system and uh, the uh, previous uh, system that uh, they used that was uh, obviously uh, rapid up. The last point to share with you is the clinical, our clinical experience using Element Spine SRS. It is a pleasure for us to show you this data. Uh, this is the paper published by uh, Nicolò Gialevra, that is a, a colleague in my department, but uh, was the involvement of most of my colleagues. Uh, this paper uh, was published in 2000. 19, really a few months ago, is open access, so you can find the details of our procedure and our data uh, really in detail without problems. And uh, uh, we treated the patient between April 2018 and uh, April 2019, 54 cases of spinal metastasis. Here you can see the uh, details uh, of uh, uh, the table of uh, regarding the details of the volumes treated, the fractionation used. You can see from one to three fraction uh, with uh, radical intent in most of the cases. 
And as you can see here, in uh, a vast reduction of back pain was observed in uh, uh, several patients. And uh, I'd like uh, to show uh, that uh, there were not acute or chronic adverse event more or equal to grade three. It is important to uh, share with you uh, the data regarding uh, local control of cancer treatment, because at median follow-up of six months, local control rates at six months and nine months were equal, 86%. Here you can see a, a typical case with the, the dose distribution to the uh, vertebral body. And as you can see, the uh, dose prescription is totally inside the body of the vertebra, while uh, the uh, spinal cord is absolutely uh, preserved. Here you can see the details uh, of uh, the treatment. Uh, I don't read uh, in detail, but uh, uh, these data, if you want, uh, are available in our paper. Uh, we obviously try uh, to use the constraints that are available in uh, literature. And uh, we treated this patient with uh, flattening filter-free uh, 10 uh, MV uh, beams. Uh, the prescription was uh, done according to ICRU Report 91. So volumetric dose prescri prescription was 95 to 95 of the PTV. It is important because uh, it is a, a choice that we decided to do. And here you can see uh, some of uh, our data updated. Uh, here you can see that the number of patients treated was uh, uh, 57, but the number of lesions treated in this patient were 83. The median lesion per patient was one, uh, with a range from one to three. You can see that the, primi the uh, primitive tumor site uh, was uh, uh, various from prostate to gastrointestinal to uh, other sites. Schedule of dose uh, were variable, one session or more fraction, most of them in uh, three. You can see the uh, biological effective dose. And as you can see here in the last period, we included also a boost, a simultaneous integrated boost. And I show you some cases in the example that I have in my slides. Here you can see a case of spine segment D4, the prescription was 21 gray in three. You can see how the system was able to generate the volume that we then treated, starting from the GTV. Here, another case, the uh, vertebra is D9, 21 in three without uh, specific problems to maintain the dose under 20 in uh, three uh, on the spinal cord. Another example, uh, D9, 24 in 3, but you can see a simultaneous integrated boost, as I said before, in the region of macroscopic visible disease on the GTV, 27 in 3. And the system is able to do this kind of uh, very uh, complex and intriguing approach. Another here, 21 in 3, but you can see how we are able to focus the dose on the simultaneous integrated boost region, uh, maintaining the dose to uh, 27 gray in three. And uh, here I have a clinical case, brief clinical case, uh, a male with 75 years old. You can see a PET PSMA with a, a PSA of 7.84. You can see the lesion in L3. And here you can see the uh, PET CT before and after in the middle of the dose distribution. But it's important to underline how uh, in the PET PSMA, the SUV was reduced after the treatment, back pain uh, was uh, uh, the half, and the PSA was uh, in diminishing uh, without uh, uh, changing in hormonal therapy. Another brief case here, you can see the vertebra involvement, uh, PET PSMA with a PSA of two, and here you can see uh, these intriguing images in which you can see the uh, PET before on the left and after on the right, in which we have a significant reduction of SUV from 10.3 to 2.5. Back pain was zero at the end of the treatment and PSA was close to zero. Uh, the dose prescription was 21 in three. Another case here in which you can see the lesion on MRI, the lesion on PET, the dose distribution. It is, uh, it is a L1 spine SRS, uh, 24 in uh, 3 plus a SIB uh, with uh, a plus of dose 
uh, of uh, 27 in three, and you can see a complete response, impressive, with uh, a back pain uh, that disappeared from the patient. So you can see that this, uh, it is a, a classic example of uh, what we can see, not only palliation, not only pain relief, but also a, a reduction or, or a disappearance of the disease in the microscopic site that was uh, evaluated before at diagnostic images. So I can conclude, uh, for sure, spinal SRS and SBRT represent an emerging solution for selective patient, obviously. These techniques allow clinicians to improve local control and prevent uh, local progression. Uh, we have uh, uh, still now uh, remain to define the standard schedule of dose fractionation and the toxicity, uh, however, seems to be uh, really low for this patient. For sure, we can say in our experience that the introduction in clinical practice of Novalis element spine SRS uh, is uh, an easy tool uh, useful for uh, maximizing the feasibility of uh, this approach. And I think that if you have a program uh, to introduce uh, this kind of indication, uh, SBRT on, or SRS in spine, uh, having uh, Novalis uh, element spine SRS, it could be the solution to start easy and without uh, technical and clinical problems. This is a, a picture of uh, obviously my staff, uh, of my team. You can see a physicist, uh, technician and doctors uh, because the data that uh, uh, you saw are obviously, uh, uh, I have to thanks to, to them for, for these results. Thank you. Well, that was a very interesting chat video presentation. Um, now we're going to have, ay, perdón, si estoy hablando en inglés. <laughs> Quiero introducir al doctor Nicola Gia Lebra, quien es compañero y colega del doctor Filippo Alonji, quien nos estará acompañando para esta sesión de preguntas y respuestas. Hello, good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon. Hi, Nicola. <laughs> So that was very interesting. Fue muy interesante este, esta presentación. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you want to start by expanding a little bit or do you have any questions in regards? Um, so I'll be translating simultaneously, okay? No sé si alguien en el público se anima a hacer alguna pregunta eh, mientras el doctor Nicola va a expandir un poco sobre la presentación. Okay, doctor. Um, tell us, you know, do you have any considerations um, in regards to this software or the use of this software in your experience, trial and errors? Yes, uh, the, the use of the spine and SRS is becoming more standardized in our department. So basically, as Professor Arangi said in the, his presentation, the, the number of oligometastatic patients are constantly increasing. And for these patients, the use of ablative treatments is probably mandatory in the next future. So the use of these techniques is very quick, is very easy to be applied. And uh, the results that we are observing are very promising. So this is a very good software uh, where also centers with a, a limited experience can start if uh, the centers want to do uh, some updates or some improvements in the management uh, of these kind of patients because also the literature is progressively increasing the evidence of in the use of ablative treatment compared to palliative treatments also for metastatic patients. Okay, eh, pues en resumen lo que dice el doctor eh, Nicola es que este, este programa, este software que se llama Elements, eh, nos nos ahorra mucho tiempo en la distribución de dosis. Eh, tiene muy buenos efectos eh, de, de tratamiento, menos efectos colaterales y toxicidades al mismo. Eh, así que es algo muy prometedor. Y a ellos les ha ido muy bien en su práctica eh, privada. Y es un software que se está introduciendo en otros centros también. Eh, tengo una pregunta, eh, la voy a decir en español, luego en inglés. I have a question, Dr. Nicola. Um, 
¿Cuál es la factibilidad de usar radiocirugía espinal en las lesiones dentro del canal medular, eh, como los meningiomas, por ejemplo? Uh, it's, it's very difficult. This is, this is a set that we're not treating at the moment because the, the, the issue is the tolerance of the spinal cord. So at the moment, we are not treating patients with intra, mid, intra spinal cord lesions. Okay, well, that's something to consider eventually. Es algo yeah. a considerar. Todavía no lo están haciendo, es muy difícil de reproducir, eh, pero ya veremos que ese será nuestro futuro reto. Tengo, I have another question. Tengo otra pregunta. Eh, las reproducibilidades en casos con cementación o fijación de elements en radiocirugía. Sorry, can you translate in English? I'm um, sorry. So what is the, repro the reproductibility in cases of segmentation and fixation of radiosurgery surgery elements? Uh, it's it's possible. So we have good result also in these in these aspects. So the auto segmentation is very useful. Uh, what we are doing at the moment uh, uh, before any any treatment is to use the support of the software to create the the target volumes. But of course, we are going to check personally any fusions between MRI or PET CT because we use both methodologies or one or the other but what we know is that the software is very very good also for auto segmentation and planning so the issue is that the use of the software can support to reduce the variability between radiation oncologists and also is very quicker because we can outline the target very fast starting from the gross tumor volumes So it's very easy and very easy also to reproduce the auto segmentation and the outline. Entonces, en conclusión, sí, es muy reproducible, ya que el sistema es muy automatizado, es muy bueno para el usuario, hay poca discrepancia entre los radioncólogos y la segmentación de los mismos. Y rápido, que es importante. Um, eh, I have another question. Eh, ¿Cuál sería el número máximo de lesiones con este tipo de programa en cuanto a tratar con seguridad? So, what would be the maximum number of lesions to treat with this software um, with like max security? Yes, at the moment, what we know from BrainLab is that we can treat uh, a single vertebra per time. But now we are also working with BrainLab to treat at the same session, during the same session, multiple uh, spinal metastases. So we have uh, some experience also for this approach that is out from uh, daily clinical practice. But we treat, for example, a lady with two vertebra, two dorsal vertebra very close, the D9 and the D10. We plan that and we have seen that it is possible to treat also more than one vertebra at the same time. Okay, so th is this because of the sieve dose gradient that you create towards the spinal cord? Yes, so the, the spinal cord is, is of course our first uh, uh, target to spare. And uh, also the software sometimes, it's, it's not at the moment focused to treat at the same time multiple vertebras. So it is something that is going on with brain lab to increase also this opportunity because we know that in uh, several patients have, for example, two or three vertebra at the same times with disease presentation. Okay, entonces sí, podemos eh, hasta ahora con este software nos permite tratar con seguridad más de una vertebra y es algo con el gradiente de con el gradiente de dosis que se dirige hacia la médula espinal. Well, I want to thank you. It's been marvelous. I love this. Um, and I think it um, gives us a little bit more to work for in the future. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you again. Gracias thank a you. todos por habernos acompañado en este simposio satélite. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah.
Y ahora les invitamos a seguir en el siguiente módulo gastrointestinal. Espero que sigan disfrutando.